What's up everybody? This is Michelle Sanchez. Uh, this is my first video online. Today we are going to be talking about Canvas apps uh, and galleries. So what's the difference between regular galleries and flexible galleries? And um, you know, how can we calculate the height of those two different types of galleries? So if you want to figure out how to make a flexible gallery, uh, have one swift scroll, this is the place to be. Um, quick shout out to Keith for encouraging me to post this video online. Uh, hopefully you guys find this helpful and let's get into it. So let's go ahead and get started and let's actually talk about regular galleries versus flexible galleries. So let me just zoom in here and let's go ahead and go full, full screen, cool. So I categorize galleries in two different ways, right? We have vertical and horizontal and flexible. These are the three types that we usually have for galleries. Um, however, I kind of group vertical and horizontal galleries together and I call them regular galleries. So you'll hear me refer to that throughout the entire video. So get used to it. Um, and then there's flexible galleries. So let's talk about the difference between the two. I'll just go ahead and chuck two galleries in here, right? Here's a vertical gallery. And let's actually go ahead. We will turn off flexible height for now. And then let's also throw a horizontal gallery. We're not going to cover it super, you know, a lot in this video, but it's just good to know the difference between the two. And let me just turn on the vertical overflow for this container. So we have the vertical galleries here. And you can see each row has a designated height. Does not matter how much text is in there, how much information is in there. Each one of these rows are exactly the same height. And the same is true for the horizontal galleries. Every row is the same height. And that is determined by the template size, right? Right here, this is the default calculation. Um, that's put in here for all of all of the regular galleries. We won't worry about that too much right now. That's just something good to know. And then we have flexible galleries. So let me just throw the template in there. And you'll see similar concept, right? Except if you notice, if I hold down the Alt key, let me zoom in a little bit. If I hold down the Alt key, you'll see things shift about. And that is because it is dynamically adjusting each row to have its own separate height. So not every height is going to be, let's say, the default 160. You know, one height may, one, one of the rows might just be 50, one of the rows might be 200, so on and so forth. So. That's the difference between the two galleries and something that I like to tell people because this tripped me up for a while is that is how to tell the difference between the galleries, right? Um, once you set up a gallery in your app and it looks good and everything feels good, so on and so forth, you might forget if you clicked flexible gallery or uh, one of the regular galleries, right? How I like to tell the difference is if you notice underneath the border property on the right hand pane for the flexible gallery, we have two, two properties right here, template size and template padding. And if we check over here in one of the regular galleries, we'll have three. So wrap count only exists as a property for regular galleries. It does not exist in flexible galleries. So if you ever get confused, just check out the properties pane. Trust me, it's a lifesaver. It's better than redoing your entire gallery because you just want to be sure it's flex. So let's jump into finding the total height of a regular gallery. Now, let's put a gallery in here. We're going to use vertical. I'm not too worried about horizontal. I don't use it too, too much, but for the purposes of this video, let's only talk vertical. Um, so let's add in a gallery there and you'll see I have containers in use here. 
Um, I'm just going to change a few things. I want it to be centered so we can kind of see things shift around. I want to turn off flexible height because we want to calculate the total height. Um, and then the template size. So it comes with this default uh, calculation in here, but we are actually going to change it. So we know the total right now is 160. I'm just going to hard code 160 in here. This will be important later because it stops us from doing a uh, circular reference in the in the app when we're calculating that height. Um, so let's think about this. We want to get the total height of what this gallery should be based on uh, the height of every single row multiplied by the number of rows there is um, in this gallery. So let's find those values and I'll show you guys how to do that. First, let's rename this gallery. It'll just make it life a lot easier. So we'll call this uh, gal, um, we'll call this gal regular. Cool. And then let's chuck a label in our little notepad over here that I am using just for the purpose of, of kind of capturing these scrap notes in here. So let's find the height of each row. And just a hint, we kind of already touched this, this property, but uh, that would be the template size. Template size determines the height of every row or the max height, I'll say. But let's take a look at gal regular dot template. And then you'll see we have a few different options. Instead of template size, we have template height. And that's what we want. So the height of every row is going to be 160. Cool. So now we know that that height for every row. Well, I mean, I just said it. So. <laughs> Let's find how many rows there are next. So let's just stretch that out. And then let's find out there are something, something rows, right? There are, and let's use the count rows function. Uh, and we are going to run that on the gallery. And then we need to pull the property all items so that we can get the full list of that. So this will count all of the items in that gallery. So there are four. We see this on the label right over here. And just for putting that sentence together, there are four rows. I have a space right there. Cool. So we have two bits of data here in our notes. We have the height of each row is 160, and there are four rows. And guess what? we're going to do with that, we are going to calculate what the total of that should be. So this height plus this height plus this height plus the fourth height. We want all of that good stuff. So let's see. The total height of the gallery should be. And we want to use that those two, the logic that we just put in there, right, for those values. Um, so we want the gal regulars dot template height multiplied by the count rows of each item in the gal regular. Cool. So now it's saying the total, it's doing the calculation for us. So it's saying the total height of the gallery should be 640. Now let's test that theory. So let's copy this logic to get that 640 value. And let's check that in the height of this. All right, right now it's 575 and we can tell that that's too short. So we're going to put that logic in there and boom, automatically adjusts. We can see that. Let's Put a border on there so you can see that full picture. You can see, awesome, no scroll bar. We play it, there's no scroll bar. So that's beautiful. Um, just to kind of prove it fully through, because let's see more than four items. I want to see it scroll naturally. Let's add a data source in here, and we'll use my 
uh, four of four good inventories in here, um, which is another little thing that I'm working on. But so we see that uh, our values have been updated. It's still 160 because remember that that is the height of the row and all of them are always going to be the same. And there are nine rows now because we have more data. Um, and the total height has updated that calculation. We can see here, if you kind of look down here in the gray, this outline's fallen off of the, uh, the canvas. And that's because it is scrollable now. So let's hit play. And for the gallery, we don't see a scroll bar there. We see the scroll bar for the, uh, this is for the container. But the gallery scroll bar would be over here if we had one. But no, nothing, just good old images, data. It's all looking good. Um, now we can see, you know, pretty pretty clean data there. I mean, it, it looks good, cool. Now the problem with this is uh, some of these descriptions are getting cut off. So uh, we don't know what the rest of this description may be. Um, guess we'll never know unless we use a flexible gallery. So let's switch over there. Same kind of layout, notes over here, flexible gallery. We're gonna check that in there. And this is where we have some fun. Cool, so let's center that one. Let's turn off the flexible height. Because remember, we want to calculate for that. We're also going to set the border to one so we can see that. And for now, let's set the template size to right now it's 515. We're just going to hard code it to 515. And then let's just remove the template padding just to ease, ease, our, ease our life a little bit. Cool. Uh, looks like there's a typo, 515. Boom, cool. Now we are ready to go. So we see this first item has one line for the body. This one has two lines for the body. So that shift is happening anytime I hold down the Alt key. It's kind of how you preview it without going into a full preview. Um, and this one's a little bit different. So let's rename this gallery to Gal Flexible. And while we're here, I'm also going to rename some of these uh, items within this, within each row. So let's do image, small image. Let's do title, let's label title, image, big image, image, and then a label body. Cool. While we're here, I'm also going to add a border to all of these, and you'll see why in a second. So let's do the same thing we did with the last one, and let's think about what we need to do in order to get this calculation working, right? It's going to be very similar to the last one, right? So we need to get the height of every row, but because the data can vary, we know that the that the height for each row may not be the same. It could be 50 for the first row. It could be 200 for the second row. Um, so we need to account for that somehow. What I like to do is I am going to check a label in here. And we're going to make it orange just so we can see it. And I'm going to widen it up too and delete the sample text that's in there. And let's rename this label to label row height. Somebody driving up my street. Um, okay, and then, uh, so label row height, cool. We need to get the height of every row and we need to do this calculation per row. So this label is gonna kind of hold this value for us um, and it'll come in handy later. So. Let's take a look at this first row, right? We know that we have an image here and a title here. We also have a big image here and then the body down here. What we need to calculate is the height of the vertical length of the row. So 
we need to find whichever one's taller, the image or the title, because remember that that title can be super long sometimes. So we need to calculate the whichever one's taller, get the height of that. We need the height of this image. We also need the height of this body down here. So we need to account for those ones. We also need to make sure that we get these spacings in between here so that we can get that full picture of the height. So we don't wanna miss those. So let's do this for this label row height. Let's update the text. So we are gonna start off with the first spacing, which we know is the image, small image, dot y. Cool. And you'll see it's updated. There's 16 in there. Let's also put this y value of this uh, label row height to be self dot text. And then we also need to convert that into a value just to make sure that's calculating. So now you'll see if I were to make the x and that zero, it's lined up with that image. And I picked the image because it has a smaller y value than the uh, title over here. But just something to think about. Uh, let's see, 300, just so we can see. Cool. So we know that we're right here at this point. Now we need to calculate whichever one's taller. We need to add it. So let's do this. Let's start using the sum function. So right now it's 16. And then we want to get whichever one's taller, the max of the image, small image, dot height, or the title dot height. Whichever one's taller, just get me that. Right now it's the image on this first line. So you see we've jumped down here uh, and now we are lined up with this, this bottom of the image. Next, we need the spacing between this image. We need the spacing between the image or this one, whichever one's taller and the next bit so let's do this for right now i'm just gonna do well let's think yeah Let's do let's do the image first so we can see how that plays out. And then we can we can circle back and add in the logic for um, if the title was super long. So let's start there. Um, so we want the spacing right here between these two items. So let's do the image large. That's this bottom image down here. Large, well, we called it big image, big image dot y. So that's that, that top line. And we want to minus the image small dot height plus the image small dot y. And there's a typo somewhere. So let's. Small image dot height plus image small image dot y. Cool. So that's that bottom one. Cool, right? So this second bit over here, it's it's lining us up with the bottom of this image, right? The y plus the height will be down here. And then the green one, this, lines up with this. So that's what gives us the spacing if we subtract those two from each other. That's the first one. Now let's do the same thing for the uh, for the uh, for the title, right? Um, for now, I'm just going to comment out this line, and you will see why in a second. So let's 
let's do the same exact thing image big image dot y minus the title dot height plus the title dot y. That has a bit more spacing. That's why we're down here. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> uh, cool. So now we need an if statement, right? Because we need to make sure we're getting whichever one's bigger. If the, we'll do if the image small image dot height is greater than the label title dot height. We'll do a greater than or equal to. Then we want to find it using the big image. Otherwise, we want to find it using the title. Cool. So now we are right in line. Hopefully, that's good. So let's go back. Let's let's comment some of these just so we don't get lost in the sauce later um first item y value spacing this one is image or title height whichever is bigger and this one's a little bit long so we'll comment up here at the top um and we'll say the spacing between the small image slash title, whichever is bigger, and the big image. I'm sure I could probably clarify a little bit more on that. I'll probably do it in the blog. So it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, legible. <laughs> But for now, that's fine. Um, all right, so where are we? If we check our orange label, we are at the top of this big image, so we need to calculate for the big image next. So that one's pretty easy. We say image big image dot height. Cool. Let me check this over here. Our orange labels, beautiful, cool. Now we need the spacing between the image and the body. This one will be easier. We don't need to use like that if statement because we don't have two items next to each other. We just have the big image. So this one should be a lot easier. To add a comma at the end of this so we can prepare for our next line. And then we want to do the body dot y minus the image big dot height plus the image small image dot y and that'll get us our spacing now let's in theory anyway nope because i confused this we want image big image here so let's just copy that there now it's looking better Take a peek back over here, check our work. Yep, we're at the top of the body, so now we just need to calculate for the body. That's easy. Let's comment this while we're here. Um, this would be spacing between big image and body. And then let's account for that body height, body dot height. Cool. And you can see we're down here. Right, like we're already we're already at the bottom line of this, so we're done. That's all we need to do. I know it sounds so it doesn't seem simple when you look back at it, um, but we're good now. The only thing that we're kind of seeing right now is that uh, since our label is set to the to that bottom of that, um, 
It's making our row a little bit bigger than we anticipated. So let's adjust our Y value to uh, not, you know, to line up the bottom of the bottom. Um, so we'll just minus self dot height here, right? Because we, we don't want to make the row, the row of this gallery bigger because we're using this like special row height label. Um, yeah, just, just leave it there. So we can see we're lined up here. I see that we're good. We see 477 for this first row. We're going to see 500 for the second row. And then we drop back down to 477 for the third row. So on and so forth. Cool. So now we have the now we have the heights of every row. Cool. Now what do we do? Uh, we need to get the sum of all of those values, right? We need to add up that 474, the 500, and so on and so forth. We need to add all of that together. So let's put it together, and we'll use our little notepad over here so that we can see our work as we go. Um, and then actually. Let me take a pause right here because um, I need to. Let's take a pause right here. I need to pause the recording, restart it. It's a whole thing. I'm new at this, so uh, please be forgiving <laughs> if it doesn't line up perfectly. Um, give me one second. All right, cool. I think we're back now. So we were just finished. We just finished calculating the. Uh, height of every row in our gallery. Cool, now we need to find a way to uh, get all those values and sum them up. Um, so I've already checked a label in here and let's title it the total of our flexible gallery should be, and here's where we're gonna throw our calculation just so we can see it. And I'm gonna pop that open a little bit, throw an and in there so we can do it. Um, you know, so this is where we get to use all of the values that we just calculated, right? So we need to actually loop through each row in the gallery and grab that number so that we can, you know, sum it at the end of the day. Um, so we need we need that table. So let's do a for all of the items for all of the galleries items. We want to get the label row height dot text because remember it's in that text value. Um, I actually want to cast this to a value to make sure that it's numeric. I know that it is, but it's just a safety precaution just in case. So there, we have the fur all in there and we're getting an error right now. Why? Because it expects text number Boolean. And if we look down here, we're pulling back a table right now here in the data type it's telling you. Um, so we have that table of all of the uh, all of the heights. So now we need to actually do something with it. So let's for now, let's do it this way. We'll just throw a sum in here. And so we're going to put a comma and you'll see you have two options, this record or value. Let's get value because that's the name of the column of the result. Right. So. Let's throw that in there. So you see that number. And I actually want to show you this too. So let's do the for all. I'm going to grab this. And right down here, I'm going to throw a data table. And this is a good way to tell, to kind of like take a look at uh, at things if you're not quite sure what what's going on or if you think something should be working and it's not, not quite there. Um, let me just move that over here for now. So if I throw my for all in here logic, and then we hit edit fields, let's add the field. We have one, one column here, it's called value. And we add that in and you see it's the value of all of the heights, 474, 500, 474. Those are what's in our labels right here. So we know that that's, that's, that's grabbing it correctly. So we have it. Um, so in theory, this number summing it should be correct <laughs> in theory anyway. So let's let's test this as it is just to see how we're doing. So we're going to copy this 
We're going to go to our gallery. Let's go to the height. We see it's 575. We know it has a, well, it doesn't really, yeah, it has a scroll right now. Um, and let's throw that in there and boom. Same thing we saw before. If we hold down the Alt key, it'll shift. I don't see a scroll bar anywhere. I'm seeing a little bit of a shift right there. So I might have missed something, but nothing too serious. It might be because of the borders. Let's take off our borders. See, that's it. All right, throw a zero in there. Yeah, there it goes, the borders. So now if I scroll on top of the gallery, we're not seeing like a mini shift or anything. We're seeing just the regular scroll that we would see anywhere else. Cool. Let's play it just to make sure. Saw it for a second, but look, I'm scrolling right now on top of this gallery and it's just catching this. So we got that height mapped out. It's looking good. Um, something else. That's how you calculate flexible gallery. Now there's some modifications that I actually make to it to make it a little bit more legible and also um, to account for uh, template padding. So that's one thing that's not in here right now is right now the template padding to this gallery is zero. Um, but for whatever reason, you might have like design specifications or whatever that wants your template padding to be like five, we'll say, right? And that's gonna shift it. And now we have that scroll because we're not accounting for that in our calculations at all. Um, so that's something we want to consider. So what I usually do for this is I'm, I'll do a plus at the end and then I'll also account for template padding, right? Self, cause we're in the gallery right now. So let's do self dot template padding times the count rows of self dot all items, right? And that will account for the padding on all of it. So this will this will add in that, that padding. Um, if you're not using padding, you don't really need to add it in. If you wanna go ahead, maybe, maybe add it in for best practice, but it's extra bit of calculation there. Um, the other thing, um, and this isn't, this is personal preference, honestly. Um, I, don't love that this is called like value in here or whatever. So um, I'll actually come in between the sum and the for all. And, you know, I might rename the column. Um, and we'll come back over here. I will actually rename the value column to row height. So I'll do rename the value column to row height and then close that off and then do a comma and then instead of value here since I just renamed it it'll be row height um it should be let's see where we where we mucked this up Huh, maybe it's because we name columns. There we go. Silly little mistakes there. But yep, so I just rename it just so that if someone, you know, if Joe Schmo comes in here and he's like, what the heck is some value, whatever, um, just makes it a little bit more legible. But of course, the most legible thing that you could do is comment this. So it actually is written out explicitly of what the heck is happening here. Um, so yeah, let's hit play. Cool. Now everything is accounted for our nice little, you know, nice little paddings in there. We've renamed that column. You know, we can see the values here. And you know, just for same thing we did with the last one, let's switch out this data source. So we have a little something extra to look at. We see a lot more rows over here in this table. Um, 
don't mind the pictures that I pulled from online. They are not the best quality, but it is what it is. We do what we can for data. Um, yeah, so you see them all going on and you can see the same thing. Let's actually hide that, that uh, row label now. We don't really need to see it. Um, you could go like an extra measure further to the X, Y zeros with height zeros. Um, it's useful. Just hide it from anybody. Um, you'll see this one has no pictures. You'll see more text here, not as much text here. Um, all of the good stuff. Uh, yeah, so now everything's smooth scrolling from here on out. But that's it. That is all you have to do for flexible height galleries to calculate that that total height of what it should be. Um, I hope this was helpful and hopefully you can use it in some of the apps that you're making. Um, I know it's made a huge difference for me if I'm ever trying to kind of stack things around each other, um, getting that height makes it, makes it way more cleaner. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know if there's something else that you guys want to see. Um, I'm going to start posting a lot more frequently and writing blogs. So you'll see the full write up there if you're a reader, not a, not a watcher. Um, follow me on Twitter. It's the loading point. All of my social media is the loading point. Um, yeah, and you know, double shout out to Keith for, for encouraging me to post this online. Um, yeah, cool. Well, all right. I think that's all I have to share for today. So I am gonna hang up now and I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> all right, bye.